Greetings and welcome to Quotes This Week on Live Law. I am Tanya Pandey and every week I bring to you the latest legal developments happening in the country. As usual, we'll cover judgments from the Supreme Court first and then move on to the other courts. The Supreme Court on December 7th dismissed the petition filed by the National Investigation Agency challenging the default bail granted to lawyer activist Sudha Bharadwaj by the Bombay High Court on December 1st. after over 3 years of her arrest in the bhima koregaon case a bench of justices yu yu lalit ravindra bhat and bela m trivedi observed that there was no reason to interfere with the bombay high court's order the supreme court on 6 december stayed the 27% reservations for the other backward classes category in the local body elections until further orders A bench of justices A M Khanwilkar and C T Ravi Kumar passed the order in writ petitions filed challenging the Maharashtra ordinance which introduced 27% O B C quota in the local body elections and the consequent notifications issued by the state election commission to give effect to the same. The bench observed that the 27% O B C quota could not have been implemented without setting up a commission and without collecting data regarding inadequacy of representation in the local government. The Supreme Court has reiterated that discretion to direct subsequent sentence to run concurrently with the previous sentence has to be exercised judiciously depending upon the nature of the offence committed. In this case, the accused had been convicted by two different courts in two different trials for the offences under the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act with respect to different transactions. In one case, he had been sentenced to undergo 12 years rigorous imprisonment and in the other 15 years. But there was no specific order that the sentences were to run concurrently. The accused filed an appeal before the High Court praying to have the sentence run concurrently. The High Court dismissed the appeal against which the accused moved the Supreme Court. A bench of justices M R Shah and B V Nagaratna dismissed the appeal observing that no discretion shall be exercised in favor of such accused who is indulging into the offense under the NDPS Act which is of a serious nature and against the society at large. In a significant judgment on the Consumer Protection Act 2019, the Supreme Court on 7th December held that the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission, that is the NCDRC, can direct the deposit of the entire amount or more than 50% of the amount determined by the State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission for conditional stay. The court added that however to pass such an order the NCDRC has to pass a speaking order assigning cogent reasons a bench of justices M R Shah and B V Nagaratna laid down this dictum in a case involving the interpretation of section 51 of the consumer protection act 2019 which prescribes pre deposit for filing appeal before the NCDRC the court also held that the condition for pre deposit for entertaining appeal under section 51 of the act was mandatory The Supreme Court has observed that while exercising jurisdiction under section 482 of the Code of Criminal Procedure a high court cannot embark upon an inquiry as to the reliability or genuineness of allegations made in the FIR or complaint. The powers under section 482 CRPC are very wide but conformance to wide powers requires the court to be more cautious the bench of justices M R Shah and B V Nagaratna said. The Supreme Court has observed that the provision of section 50 of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act is required to be complied with in the case of personal search only but not in the case of search of vehicle. The court also observed that merely because independent witnesses were not examined the conclusion could not be drawn that the accused was falsely implicated. Non-production of contraband in the court by itself is not fatal. The bench of justices Indira Banerjee and J.K. Maheshwari also observed while confirming the conviction of an accused in an NDPS case. The Supreme Court bench of Justice K.M. Joseph and Justice Ravindra Bhat has delivered a split verdict on the issue whether the card issuing bank charging an interchange fee for credit card transactions is to be subjected to service tax for the same. Justice K M Joseph was of the opinion that the interchange fee is received for the service rendered by the card issuing banks 
and hence liable to be subjected to service tax. Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt agreed that the issuing bank was providing service, but unlike Justice Joseph felt that the services rendered by the issuing bank and the acquiring bank cannot be segregated and have to be seen as a single unified service. In other words, he opined that not the interchange fee but the gross consideration is to be taxed. Let us now go over judgments from various high courts. The Kohati High Court on 9th December quashed all orders pertaining to an alleged hate speech case registered against Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Subramanyam Swami at the additional Chief Judicial Magistrates Court in Karim Ganj in 2015. Justice Manish Chaudhary passed the order in a petition filed by Swami seeking to quash all criminal proceedings connected with the case. The High Court on November 11th had reserved the judgment in the case after hearing both parties. The Karnataka High Court has issued notice on December 8th to the Union of India and two others in a petition seeking to declare sections 99 and 100 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code as unconstitutional, being arbitrary, discriminatory and violative of Article 14. A division bench of Chief Justice Ritu Rajavasti and Justice Sachin Shankar Magdum issued the notice and posted the matter for further hearing on March 29, 2022. The petition also seeks to declare Section 95, Subsection 1 of the IBC as unconstitutional to the extent of permitting filing of application through a resolution professional. The Delhi High Court has granted ad interim relief to the Enforcement Directorate by staying the operation of the notices issued by West Bengal Police to its officials performing the statutory functions in Delhi in relation to the coal scam case. The ED is investigating the illegal coal mining case and the role of complainant TMCMP Abhishek Banerjee under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in the New Delhi headquarters. The impugned notices dated August 21, 2021 and July 22, 2021 were issued under Section 160 CRPC. In an important verdict, the Kerala High Court has declined to allow the plea of an accused in a POXO case where he voluntarily submitted to undergo a narco-analysis test to prove his innocence in the matter. The single-judge bench of Justice M. R. Anita observed that even if allowed, the statements obtained through the test are not admissible in law. The Allahabad High Court has ruled that a victim of rape cannot be compelled to undergo DNA test to determine the paternity of her child. The court was adjudicating upon a revision petition challenging the order dated June 25, 2021 of the additional sessions judge Sultanpur, wherein such a DNA test was allowed to be conducted. Justice Sangeeta Chandra observed with dismay that the concerned additional session judge had misdirected his energies as the question in consideration before him was not whether the child born to the victim was the child of the accused but whether or not the offence of rape had been committed by the accused. It was further held that a victim of rape cannot be compelled to undergo DNA test after such long time of the alleged incident. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to Live Law to not miss any videos from us. I am Tanya Pandey and you're watching Courts this week. Have a lovely day. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.